Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. For today's video, I made this creepy scene inspired by The Electric State. No, not the idiotic movie by Netflix. We found an old Panda Express in the X. All the food was still good. Got fortune cookies, General Sal's chicken, orange chicken, chicken fried rice, pork fried dumplings, all that stuff. Have you eaten yet? Instead, I'm talking about the original graphics novel, in which it depicts a dark, gloomy, dystopian world. And in this Blender project, I tried to replicate that environment, and hopefully I was able to create that, and if you want to create something like this, stick around till the end. I started off by creating a plane and adding a new camera. Then I went to render setting, changed from EV to cycle. I then added a cube and then scaled the dimension to make it into a wall. Next I downloaded this street light from Sketchfab. I only needed one light from this pole so I went to edit mode and deleted the other one that I didn't need. Next I downloaded this phone booth from Sketchfab and placed it right under the street light. And this is basically it. If you're new to Blender like me then this is the easiest way to do things. Download free models from the internet and use them in your scene accordingly. Next, I downloaded another street light from Sketchfab. For this one, I wanted to change the angle of the light to match more closely to the reference image. So I went to edit mode, selected all the parts of the light and then changed it to about 12% angle. Once I was happy with the angle, I went back and selected all the new parts that were created and duplicated and put it on the opposite side. After everything looked good, I decided to move on to shading. For shading, you have to first make sure the Node Wrangler add-on is turned on. Then you can use Ctrl Shift T after selecting the principal BSDF. This will allow you to select multiple texture at the same time. Instead of bringing in the base color, the roughness, or the normal map individually, you can select all at the same time and it will go to its corresponding link. And after doing this for the rest of the models, I moved on and added the actual light. The first light I added was this spotlight right above the telephone booth. For this, I would suggest you go to rendered view and then go to light tab and then play around with different settings until you get something you like. The next thing I did was add an IES texture. I still don't fully understand this but from what I gathered, it makes your light more directional than being dispersed equally. So in order to do this, you go to this website and download from any one of these textures and then add them to your light. First make sure the light is selected and then go to the shader editor and then click use node. Then you want to add an IES texture node, click external, then click the folder and select the downloaded file, then connect the factor to the strength of the emission, and that's it. At first nothing will change because you need to have fog in your scene to actually see the effect. And that's exactly what I did next, I added the fog. Which is pretty easy, all you have to do is add a cube and then scale it up to cover the whole scene. You might also want to click this orange button, go to viewport display and then go to display as instead of texture you want to click bound. This will make your cube transparent and you'll be able to see inside the cube. It's not a necessary step but I found this to be very helpful. Now to actually create the fog you need to select the cube and go to shader editor. Then you want to delete the principal VSDF node and then add a volume scatter node. Then play around with both slider until you get something you like. I think a density of 0.03 worked best for my scene. Once I was happy with the lights, I moved on and then added this tree model from Sketchfab. By now you already know the drill, bring in a model, apply the shading, place it around the scene and then move on. This is pretty straightforward and easy to do. Once I was happy with the trees, I moved on and added an area light to the other street lamp. I added a blue tint color to this. Then I also added the same IES texture node here. 
Then I duplicated it multiple times. Next, I went to the world setting and changed the color and the strength. The next thing I did was add the parking lot. In order to do this, I added a plane and then subdivided it multiple times and then deleted the middle faces and then duplicated it multiple times to create a parking lot. Next, I added this texture from Polyhaven as the ground. Overall, the environment and the aesthetic is done. Now I just need to put my characters in there. But before that, I added these two car models from Sketchfab to make the scene more complete. Now I'm not going to waste your time and show the shading part since you already know how to do that. As you can see here, I scattered the car around to give the scene more depth. And for the main car, I opened one of the doors and put a point light inside to illuminate the interior of the car. For the foreground character, I added this model from Sketchfab. I also added an aerial light from the back to illuminate the character better. Last but not least, I added this monster from Sketchfab. I didn't quite like how it was standing up and how skinny the limbs were. It didn't quite make it scary enough. So I decided to make it lean forward then added more legs to the bottom. And for the top, I duplicated the spine few more times and then duplicated it again and rotated 180 degrees and then pushed it up and made it into a rib cage. I couldn't quite figure out what to do with the arms. They were too skinny and that didn't make it scary enough for me. So eventually I just decided to delete them all. And that's pretty much it for the monster. I just scaled it back up and then pushed it into the background. I also added an aerial light right above the monster to give it a little bit more highlight. I almost forgot to mention I added this image from Unsplash as the background. And that's pretty much it. This project was pretty easy to do. All I had to do is download models from the internet and then use them in my scene. Let me know what you think in the comments. And thanks for watching and I will see you next time.